The Liberal MP Anne Sidmalis has been the only politician willing to name names when it comes to allegations of bullying behaviour, blaming branch stacking, undermining and leaks for her decision to quit politics at the next election. While state power broker and New South Wales MP Gareth Ward has disputed the claims, the departure of Ms Sidmalis will only increase the coalition's challenge to retain the marginal seat. It also reduces the number of women in Liberal Party ranks following the decision of Victorian MP Julia Banks to also resign at the next election. Calls for quotas, concerns over a bullying culture and what happens next in the pre-selection process are all issues to unpick with former Liberal MP and the current president of the Batemans Bay Liberal Party branch within the seat of Gil Gilmore. Good morning, John Haslam. Good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us. So much has happened since we last talked about Gilmore. Were you surprised by Anne Sidmalis' decision to uh, not be a candidate at the next election? Not really, Simon. Uh, I went to the FEC, Federal Electorate Conference, annual general meeting in Nowra, uh, where basically her supporters were rolled um, in a very uh, calculated way and she was very upset at that meeting. And knowing her well, uh, I thought, gosh, this doesn't really look good. I think Anne's had enough. And uh, as you say, they were, her supporters were rolled in a calculated way, and she says that made her position no longer viable. Uh, is that what she's referring to when she talks about branch stacking? Yes, indeed. Uh, she's uh, over the years that I've known her since Gilmore uh, took over the Batemans Bay area. Uh, she's spoken to me as a former politician. So I think that's nice. Uh, she thinks I understand these things, and I do. Uh, she was very concerned all along that uh, there were people within her branches who seemed to have some other agenda uh, than keeping her in the seat or even having the seat won by the Liberal Party. Was, do you think, in terms of how the party should operate, was there anything improper about the way she was rolled? No, that's, I'm afraid that's uh, uh, democracy at that level. Uh, it happens uh, from time to time. Uh, some branches, uh, it happens a lot. Uh, we've seen a fair bit of it recently. It seems to be that in the New South Wales Liberal Party, uh, there is what's called the Conservative Wing and the Moderate Wing, and uh, they seem to have more fun fighting each other than they do fighting the Labor Party. So what type of branch stacking is going on then? Because I often think of branch stacking as, you know, signing up people to a party who might not even realise that they're uh, being signed up or not might not be paid up members of, of a party, but this seems like a different type of branch stacking. You, you couldn't do that because the Liberal Party's got uh, protections in for that. You have to be a member of a branch, I think, for six months before you can vote. So uh, that sort of thing is not done. And uh, it, it, new members are checked out very carefully by people. So if somebody wants to start controlling the branches, they have to do it over a fairly long period. So what is the type of branch stacking that she was referring to? Well, she I don't know. I, it was happening up in the northern part of Gilmore. It wasn't happening in Batemans Bay, so I can't speak of direct knowledge of it. But uh, she said that there were new people coming in and that her representatives, the people that she'd worked with the whole time she'd been in politics, uh, were suddenly voted out. So... I, I think that there was influence there, but whether it was by bringing new members in or not, I can't say from personal knowledge. And coming after uh, the claims made by Victorian MP Julia Banks and Lucy Gachui, uh, what answered Marlis had to say about uh, bullying and intimidation from within the, the party must be uh, very concerning. Um, do you share those concerns? Well, yes, I do, and yes, I don't. I mean, you've got to be pretty robust to go into politics, and it is difficult. I mean, I'm a feminist in a sense, uh, but uh, if you treat a woman uh, in the same, exactly the same way as you treat a man, in other words, in the robust and fairly confronting way, uh, it looks more like bullying to me, but I'm, I'm old-fashioned, I suppose. Uh, some of the things that were happening to Anne... Uh, she regarded as bullying and unpleasant, but often, of course, it's how you see it yourself. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't 
there. I haven't seen it, but she described it as bullying. So I think she felt very... Un well, obviously, she felt very uncomfortable about it. She felt so uncomfortable, she decided to get out of politics. And uh, what do you think needs to be the response of the party to those uh, allegations uh, and uh, the fact there's a, a, you know, a number of people making the same claims about the Liberal Party uh, at the same time? Oh, it's difficult. It's for people like me as branch presidents and others when they see anything like that going on. It's to tell people to cut it out. But it really is difficult because that's politics. I mean, politics is a fairly hard game and... I can assure you that the Liberal Party doesn't uh, isn't the only one where politics has fought very strongly. I mean, we do know that other parties, particularly the Labor Party with its union background, they play their politics very hard, much harder, I think, than the Liberal Party is used to. But uh, I think it's really just a matter of, you know, like you're talking to your kids and that and just to tell people it's not acceptable. Now, of course, uh, we know Gilmore was held by the Liberal Party by a very slim margin at the last election. What does uh, the what do all these latest developments do to the party's chances of retaining it at the next election? Well, I think it makes it more difficult because if a party seems to be in disarray, people are perhaps going to shift their vote elsewhere. Uh, it really depends on what happens now. Uh, I, I'm personally of the view that they should reopen nominations now for the seat of Gilmore and see if we can flush out, uh, you know, uh, some more people wanting to apply. And I'll certainly be uh, encouraging any females uh, that would like to apply for the position uh, to, to do so. I mean, we do need more women. I don't believe in quotas. I believe in quality. But... Uh, you know, we, the Liberal Party, for all sorts of reasons, needs more women. Of interest uh, to you, looking after uh, the area of the South Coast, of course, is the pre-selection for the seat of Eden Monero, which is taking place this Saturday. And I understand there's a couple of crackerjack women standing for that, so it'll perhaps we should keep our eye on that. Yes, do you think it would be a good move for the party to uh, pre-select candidates in both seats, uh, female candidates? Oh, well, the party, it's the rank and file that do it. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, Eden, um, South Coast, Eurobadella, we've got a, a female mayor and a female CEO of the Eurobadella Council. It seems to be working pretty well, so you've got to start getting on the side of women, don't you? What about quotas within the Liberal Party? We know it's a target of the Federal Liberal Party to have a 50% uh, female representation among their parliamentary members by, I think, 2025. But it's only about half that now, less than 25%. Uh, doesn't seem to be on track. Do you think quotas uh, should be embraced? I can only give you my personal view. I don't like quotas. I, I believe that people should get to where they get by their own excellence. Uh, I think it's really up to the Liberal Party itself and people at the grassroots to go out and recruit really good people to stand and get behind them. Uh, quotas are very artificial and for a woman to think that she's got pre-selection in the seat because she's a woman rather than she's the best candidate seems to me to be wrong. And in terms of other uh, candidates, do you think uh, if it isn't uh, opened up again, Grant Schultz would be um, home and hosed as the, the candidate you'd imagine? Well, it depends how it would happen, but I think that's very unlikely. I mean, I'm going to have a branch meeting of the Batemans Bay branch next week and I'll ask them what they want to do and I'm, I'll be putting forward to them that we should ask the, the powers that be in Sydney that they should reopen the nominations for the seat. Are you looking at all towards uh, possible uh, candidates uh, moving over from state politics, be it Gareth Ward or even Andrew Constance? It'll be interesting to watch, won't it? I, I don't think Andrew... I know Andrew Constance well. Uh, I don't think he had anything to do with Anne's problems. Uh, I can't comment on Gareth. It's just rumour that... Uh, makes him the villain, but, uh, well, why was it all happening? I mean, why would you do this to Anne unless somebody was uh, in, in the background trying to knock her off? Well, John, still a long way to go in politics between now and the next election, and thank you so much for uh, chewing over the recent events for us. Thank you very much, Simon. John Haslam is the president of the Batemans Bay branch of the Liberal Party and he was also the uh, federal member for Canberra from 1975 to 1988.